Okay, up until now we've been talking about quadratic um, functions. We've been talking about them in terms of the properties of them, like what do we call the values where they cross x? We call those, actually we can write some of that down now, we call them zeros. That's zero s, I'm sorry, it should be zeros with no e. We call them x-intercepts. We have our y-intercept, which is where it crosses the y-axis. We've talked about, you know, the a value, which is not the same as this a value. It's actually the value right here, because we did a lot in vertex form. Now we're going to be really focusing on what happens when instead of just having, like, this, like we have for the last unit where we were just looking at these expressions that didn't have an equal sign, what happens when I say this is actually equal to something? I want to know what happens when y is 5. Well, when y is 5, maybe this is 5. Well, what are, what are these, the, the parabola crosses in two places. It crosses y at two places. What are the values of those places? So that's what I'm looking at. So let's start by kind of naming some of this new vocabulary. I mean, not a lot of it is new, but there's a couple of new terms that we need to know what they mean. First of all, this is the graph of a quadratic function. That says quadratic function, like see, like right there, just in case you can't read my handwriting, which you probably can't. Um, so when we talk about these quadratic functions, when we talk about now we're using equations, the equations that we're using is, if you recall, when we check something in the calculator, we put like, like say it was 3x plus 6 equals 5. We put this in y1 and we put this in y2, okay? We're going to kind of end up doing the same thing. And what we have there, if you actually look at the graph, which we rarely do, but when you look at the graph, what you see is you see a line that looks like 3x plus 6 and then you see another horizontal line at 5. Where they cross is the solution to the equation and they only cross in one place. In the case of a quadratic, they're going to cross in 0, 1, or 2 places, depending on where in the parabola they are. Okay, so um, when we talked about systems, so when, in that case we had like 3x plus 6 equals 6x minus 2, and we were looking for where those coincided, we called that a solution. And the solution is where two lines cross. In the case of, in this case, I'm looking for where this parabola crosses y equals whatever value this is. Like, let's pretend this is y is 5. I want to know what are the x values when y is 5. Okay, so again, that's what we call the solution because it's where these two points coincide, where they're the same. Okay, so the new words that we have, it, we call them roots. Like, because like, think of, think of the x-axis as the ground. The roots are where, that's where the, the graph is going into the x-axis, where it's rooting, like a tree, you know, like we have the tree, right? You know, I'm going to just draw a tree. It's the saddest little tree ever. Whoop, 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 whoop. There's the tree. And here's the ground, and here's all the roots, right? Well, this is the x-axis, and where the roots start right there, that is, those are our zeros. So we also call them roots, and we call them solutions as well. So if they don't tell me what the solution, so if they don't tell me, give me a specific value they want you me to use, like see down here, they're going to ask me to look at 14. If they don't give me a specific value, then I assume that they're talking about the x-axis. They're talking about where it goes through x, where x, where y is 0, where it roots into the ground, where it has our zeros, okay? So if they don't tell me, if they don't give me a value, like if they just say, what are the solutions? Then they're talking about f of x equals 0. If they tell me this equation is equal to something, so if instead of y equals ax squared, if they said like 15 equals ax squared, then instead of having me look at 0, they want me to look at y is 15. Okay, and we're going to do a ton of examples of this tomorrow in class, so don't freak out too much. Okay, um, all right, so, um, so now we're going to skip this part for now, and we're going to come back to it tomorrow, um, but for now, I want us to actually do one example. There's an example in the back, and we're going to save that one tomorrow in class, and we're going to go over it. Okay, so, um, hang on a second. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. So for this problem, Okay, they're going to give us a whole bunch of different y values they want us to look at. And we're going to look at those together. And we're going to see what the x values are, where they coincide. Okay, so first of all, it says place your ruler on the graph to represent all the points with a y coordinate of 14. So there's 14 right there. So all of these y values are 14. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a line right there. What would the equation of this line be? Take a second right now and, and figure out what you think that line would be. Okay, this is a 
horizontal line, which makes it a hoi, which makes it a y equals. And where, what is the y value that it equals to? Well, it equals 14. So the equation of this line is y equals 14. Okay? Now, if I were going to, if they gave me this and said, what are the solutions, they might write this equation. They might say 14 equals 2x squared minus 8x minus 10. So this may be what it looks like. They might not say, what is the, what is the equation, um, what, are, what, are the, what are the values of x when y equals 14? They might write this and ask me to figure out what the values of x are. Okay? So this line is y equals 14. Now they want me to write down the coordinates where my ruler intersected the graph. Okay, so we made this line right here. So it crosses here and here. Those are solutions. Those are solutions when y is 14. Okay, so my x values when y is 14, well, my coordinates, they want them as coordinate form, are negative 2, 14, and uh, 6, 14. Okay, and if I look over here, I can see negative 2, 14 as a value. Now, I can't see the other one because I'd have to build out the table, but it's there. Okay, um, so that's what we, so that if they ask me for coordinates, that might be what they're, they're saying. They might also just want to know the x values, and we're going to do an example of that right now. Okay, so now it says slide your ruler so that it models the equation y equals negative 10. Okay, well, here is negative 10. Okay, so y equals negative 10. Okay, now it says for what x values does the function y equals to negative 2x squared minus 8x minus 10 have a value of negative 10? And again, they might just write negative 10 equals 2x squared minus 8x minus 10. Okay, well the values, the x values, there's one here and one here. Okay, so there's one at x equals 0 and one at x equals four. And I can also see that here. So when x is negative, when y is negative 10, I have two values, one at zero and one at four, just like I see on the graph, I mean on the table, I'm sorry, okay? I want you guys to try the x values when two x squared minus eight x minus 10 is zero. Okay, so we're gonna put our ruler at zero and again, you could be using your badge for this if you wanted to. Y equals zero. What is another name for Y equals zero? Take a second and write that down. Hopefully what you said when I asked you what Y equals zero is, is you said that's, oh hey, that's the, that's the x-axis, okay? And it's always gonna be. Um, so um, let's take a look at that. So I've got two values right here. And this is, since we're going up by two here, my X values are X equals negative one and x equals 5, okay? And again, what are those also called? What's another word for those? I mean, and we have them up here. There are roots, our solutions, our zeros, our x-intercepts. And we can see those x-intercepts right here. See those x-intercepts right there at negative 1 and 5, which is exactly what I found down here, okay? Now, I want to look at, they're gonna, they gave us one more, but I want us to actually look at two. So 12, 14, 16, 12, 14, 16, 18. Here's 18 right here, okay? So if I look at y equals negative 18, what's different about this point? Take a moment and answer that question. What's different about this point? It's special. Okay, hopefully what you said was, what's different about this point is that this is the vertex. Okay, what makes it different is it's the vertex. The vertex does not have a symmetrical pair, so I'm only going to have one x value. And that x value, I can see it here and here is 2. Now, just for grants, what if I asked you to put a line at x equals negative 20? I'm sorry, y equals negative 20. Okay, and I put this line down here at y equals negative 20. What's happening down there? How many solutions do I have down there? I've got none because the parabola never reaches that far. So I have no x values. I have no solutions. I have no, no solutions to y equals 20 because there are no values where my parabola crosses that graph. 
Okay, so tomorrow in class we'll do these problems. You didn't know how to do them earlier, which is why we never did them. And then we have an, a whole other example in the back I want to do as a class, just in case we need help. Um, have a good day.